Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. This is Spike Viper, and today we're going to be doing something pretty interesting. We're going to go to our humble solar system, and we are going to see what happens if we double the mass of every single planet. So, this is an idea from Silly Pop what oh or new yam citizen new yam i guess um but silly possibilities and let's get started so we're going to start with the sun we're just going to set that to two we're going to do our that's already want bad we've already started a supernova but now we're going to switch we're just going to round things up so boop nine for mercury this is going to be two Earths, obviously. And then we're going to have Venus over here, which is going to be set to 130-ish. And then Mars is going to be set to about 18 moons. Jupiter is going to be set to 640 Earths. And Saturn will be set to 100, uh, let's just do 200, 200 Earths, that was supposed to be 200, there we go, 200 Earths, Uranus is going to be 30, yeah, I, I, I purposely pronounce it really weirdly so that no one can make stupid comments in the comment, wait, it's kind of the point of the comment section, isn't it? Okay, so 20. 34 for Neptune and then we will include Pluto just switch this to a 2.6 bam magical everything in the solar system has been doubled let's see what happens so instantly I think the Sun's going to give us a slight issue I mean, this is Nova Remnant, so very possibly there was just a supernova. We will see. It looks like no. No supernova. However, the orbits of everything is thrown way off, and Jupiter has a lot of mass now. Clocking in at... Wait, two Jupiters? Really? Doubling Jupiter's mass made it two Jupiters? Uh, but to put it into perspective of the sun, it's actually about two thousandths the size of the Sun which is a lot that's pretty big for an object in space um, but obviously the Sun is just much much larger than it was before doubling the Sun is a whole lot more mass than doubling a planet so Earth is actually still relatively stable um, it seems like the temperature is slowly going up I can't tell let's make a graph Oh, we need our graph. Come back, graph. Yeah, so it looks like the temperature is dropping uh, in its far side of the orbit, but it looks like we are continually getting higher peaks every year, which means that, yes, Earth is pretty much doomed soon. The temperature is going over 100 degrees Celsius, which means that it is literally, the air is boiling hot. Now we're at 110 degrees. Yeah, the oceans are going to start evaporating. So it's not a happy ending for Earth. Earth is continually getting hotter and hotter as time goes on. We may stabilize at some point, but it doesn't look like we're going in that direction. Oh, simulation is uh, having a tiny bit of weirdness. What just happened? I think Earth actually just got flung by Venus or something because now it's even way more of a radical change between uh, the cold and hot seasons and it is kind of stabilized. It's not really going up any higher anymore, but yeah, it's still, this is pretty brutal. Everything on the surface is evaporating and then coming back every year. It is not livable not at all the rest of the solar system is pretty much the same just thrown off a bit and then Jupiter oh maybe Jupiter is what messed with Earth 
I wasn't really paying attention. I don't know what pulled it. Could have been just a close flyby by Venus, though. Which is more likely. But when Jupiter comes by, the sun probably gets quite a bit of a pull towards it. I can't tell, though. And there's a lot of debris being thrown around by the now unbalanced gravitational system. So you know what? That is actually pretty interesting. So let's just double the size of the sun. Again, let's go to four suns. There we go, and now it's now it's the end. It's the end of the world as we know it. Temperature swings are even more extreme now, although it's kind of always boiling hot now. It's just, you know, it's a nice, nice beach day, except instant sunburn, but much worse than sunburn. You're just going to kind of disintegrate from the amount of sun you're getting. But we haven't done enough. Let's double the mass of the sun once again. I know I'm not doubling anything else, but the sun is the most interesting thing to double. We Poor Mercury is being flung around really fast. Um, wow. Mercury is moving so fast. Jeez. Let's look at its motion. It is moving at 500 kilometers per second, which is 1,000th of light speed. That's pretty intense. Let's double the sun's mass again. How exciting. Let's see what happens now. Mercury gets pulled in even closer to the sun. Now it's going up at its max to... Ooh, over a thousand kilometers per second. At max, we are hitting eight, nine, ten, eleven hundred, twelve hundred 1200 kilometers per second. That's pretty intense. It's also slowly vaporizing, um, but we're ignoring that. So, Mercury is now going very, very fast. Compared to light speed, that's like... I think two thousandths. I think it's getting about two thousandths. There we go. Maybe three, three, four, four thousandths of light speed. That is impressive. That is pretty impressive if you can comprehend how fast light speed is, which it's kind of incomprehensible. That's kind of the point. It's just a number so big that it's instantaneous to basically anyone, unless you're doing very specific, uh, things that actually need relativity but let's go ahead and double the size of the Sun again I think this is going to make the Sun so big that it's actually going to hit mercury just from getting bigger but maybe not mercury is now getting to 2200 <laughs> 2200 kilometers per second at its fastest and the funny part is that it's also hitting over a thousand degrees, which it's actually vaporizing now. Uh, mercury is just falling apart. There's too much heat. Its surface is becoming gaseous and it's just floating away and being ripped apart by the amount of... Uh, just, it's so close and the sun is so massive that the difference in gravitational pull from the front of the planet and the back are causing it to be shifted and ripped apart. You can see that's actually becoming kind of see-through because it's it's kind of sublimating, which means it's going from a solid to a gas rather uh, instantly from the change in heat. Mercury is dead. Earth is still at the mass it was at before, though. Surprisingly, Earth is doing just fine. The rest of the solar system is kind of chilling as well. Uh, I think if we double the size of the sun one more time, I think it is going to be the end of Mercury. Yeah, Mercury is gone. Now Earth has taken its place, and Earth is so large that there is a lot of material to be ripped off. I wish we had gotten that in slow motion, but Earth is uh, there. Yeah, Earth is being ripped completely apart here.
Poor Earth. I don't think Earth ever deserved this. Ooh, another. It's just being ripped completely apart. It's craziness. And then around again. Oh, now it's becoming... Yeah. Earth is done. Um, I think if we doubled the uh, mass of the sun one more time to 128. Wow. Programmers would love these numbers. Bam! Earth has been eaten. Uh, the rest of the solar system is just completely messed up. And I think that is... The lesson to be learned, don't mess with the mess of things in the solar system. We have a nice balance right now. Yeah. Great, great lesson, kids. Don't mess with the mess of the sun. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye.